Hey guys, I hope those of you who are starting school soon are having a good back to school preparation season right now. And if this is a little early for you, like it is for me, I start school on October 1st. I hope that this video will still be helpful to you. You can just store some of these ideas in your back pocket for when you get closer to your first day of the school year. In this video, I'll be talking about 10 specific things you can do to start your school year strong in the few weeks leading up to your first day of school and the week or so immediately after you start. We're going to go in roughly chronological order of when each of these tasks should be completed. And you Task number one is to take a break until you get bored. If you're kind of like me, you enjoy kind of being busy and filling your time with things that you enjoy. And of course, it's no problem to be spending your time wisely and being productive, but you also do still have to take a break. I mean, it's called summer break for a reason. And no, doing slightly less schoolwork than usual is not taking a break. You need to just take some time to do absolutely nothing. Although this sounds unproductive, in the long run, letting your mind relax and regain some of that energy will help you be more motivated and more productive in the time that you spend working. I find that after a week or so of just doing nothing, my brain gets so bored with itself that I'm absolutely itching to go back to school or try something new or work on a new project. I think that the level of inspiration and energy that I got from taking a break was worth way more than the week I could have spent trudging through my math homework. Step number two is to transition your sleep schedule. Now over the summer, it's pretty normal to just slide into a sleep routine that isn't really ideal for school hours. And instead of suddenly forcing yourself to wake up early on the first day of school, take two or three weeks to transition yourself over. That kind of sudden change in sleep schedule, that sudden shock to your system is kind of like jet lag. And before a long trip, you might take some tactics to avoid jet lag, like shifting your sleep schedule hour by hour or half hour by half hour. For example, if you wanted to shift from sleeping at 2 a.m. and waking up at 11 a.m., to sleeping at 10 p.m. and waking up at 7 p.m., you might just set your alarm clock 15 minutes earlier every single day for about two weeks until you arrive at your desired wake up time without too much discomfort. You can also use this method to adjust your meal schedule to the way that lunch breaks and snack breaks are laid out in your school schedule. Number three is commit yourself to a stretch goal. To figure out which stretch goal you should be aiming yourself towards, answer this question. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Wherever your mind goes, that's what I would say you really want to do, but you're limiting yourself because you're afraid that you'll mess up. And that's totally okay, it's fine to be scared, but let that fear be your compass because that's how you know it's out of your comfort zone and growth only happens when you try to go outside your comfort zone. I also recommend that you commit to this goal, as in find yourself a way to lock yourself in. Because, you know, in a moment of bravery, you might decide, I'm totally ready to take this leap of faith and try this crazy hard thing, but then later on you might lose your steam, so just find yourself a way to make yourself do it. For example, here are some of the ways that I committed myself to challenges in high school. One example would be taking AP Calculus BC immediately after pre-calc, which I did not feel ready for, but since I signed up for the class, there was no way to back out of that one. Another way I challenged myself was by joining the track team in my freshman year, having never done sports in school before. But I had essentially locked myself in because my parents had already paid for my uniform and all of my friends were expecting me to be at practice every day, so I basically had to go. And those two goals that I thought would be way too hard ended up being some of the most helpful growth opportunities for me in my high school years. The fourth task to work on is refreshing your past knowledge. Unless you've been regularly reviewing throughout the summer, which I don't expect anybody to be doing, it's completely normal to forget some of the stuff that you learned in the past. 
And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, committing to a full study regimen with flashcards and practice tests and everything isn't necessarily realistic for everyone. But in the few weeks or a month leading up to the beginning of your school year, you can take some time to look through some books or watch some Khan Academy videos and just get a quick refresher on the knowledge you might need for next year. Sometimes the best preparation is to just do your summer homework. This will be especially important in classes that rely a lot on past knowledge, like foreign language classes or math classes. If you'd like some advice on self-studying, I will link a video about that in the cards right now. We're about halfway there. Task number five is to reset your organization system. First, take everything out of your backpack, hold it upside down, shake it, make sure every last gum wrapper and a penny is out of the bottom, and then wash it. While you wait for it to go through the laundry or dry out, you can clean out your pen case and your paper organization system. In order to have a more efficient and organized filing system, I think it's best to declutter anything that you don't think you'll need, and then only keep things that you're pretty sure you'll use as references in the future. I'll link a video in the cards right now. It's a declutter with me video in which I go through some tips about how to decide what to declutter and what to keep. I know it can be painful to part with some of those papers that you've put so much effort into, but sometimes it's just better to either store them digitally or just completely recycle them because you're really never going to need them again. Additionally, if you felt that your paper organization system from the past year wasn't working the best for you and you want to change it up, either by completely overhauling it and changing it into a completely new system, or just tweaking it here and there to optimize it, I will link a video in the cards and description about how to set up a paper organization system. Now that you've spent some time decluttering your physical space, it's also time to declutter your schedule and therefore your mental space. Sometimes we just get stuck in a routine and I encourage you to take this time to be intentional and think about what you actually enjoy and find fulfilling. At the beginning of high school, it's really easy to sign up for a ton of clubs and organizations and extracurricular activities that you end up not really enjoying all that much. Now, I encourage you to get out there, explore your interests, and maybe do some things that you end up not really liking. But at a certain point, it's time to cut those things out and instead focus more of your time and effort on the things that are most important to you. For example, in my freshman year of high school, I joined like six clubs, even though it was like physically impossible for me to go to meetings for all of them. But in my sophomore year, I quit pretty much all of them and instead dedicated some time to starting my own club. On a similar note, you might also want to declutter your unproductive or break time. Take some time to reflect on what you usually do to fill in your dead space time, like when you're waiting in line or when you just can't think of anything else you have to do. For example, I installed the app Libby on my book, which allows me to read ebooks from my local library, so that hopefully whenever I have some time spent waiting in line, I can scroll on my book app instead of scrolling through TikTok. Task number seven is to go over your syllabus. If you're in middle or high school, this might not necessarily apply, but for college classes in particular, syllabuses will usually contain a list of every assignment and exam and when it's assigned and when it's due. So take the time to record all of those into your planner. Additionally, if it says you have a long-term project to work on or a book to read over a pretty long period of time, divide that up into smaller units and then pace yourself out for the rest of the semester or quarter. Additionally, for middle and high school, when teachers might require certain materials, also check out that required material list and buy the things that you need. While you're at it with checking your planner as well, just take advantage of any schedules that you might have been given at this time not necessarily academic, but other things like club meeting or sports practice schedules, and write those into your planner. The eighth thing I recommend is to officially meet your teachers. It only takes a couple minutes to introduce yourself, whether that be during office hours or before or after class, or you could even just write them an email. I know this is a little bit harder than usual because a lot of schools are online right now, but do your best with what you got. Especially in a very large lecture class, this is an important first step so that the teacher at least knows your name and your face. 
Trust me, I understand the anxiety that can come up from just trying to go talk to the teacher, but taking this first step now will make it much easier for you to ask them for help or even potentially ask them for a letter of recommendation later on in the year. It's better to just endure a slight bit of potential awkwardness and discomfort right now at the beginning of the year, rather than trying to introduce yourself at the very end of the year or just right before you need to ask them for a favor. The way I would recommend going about this is, hello, title, last name, my name is your name here. You can talk about yourself if you like, if you're in college, say your major and what class you're taking with them. And then I recommend asking a smart question about the class material. Emphasis on smart question because I feel like asking a dumb question would come off as wasting your time. After you get an answer to your satisfaction, you can just peace out, be like, thanks for talking to me, I'll see you later. I mean, don't do all the peace signs and stuff, but I'm trying to convey through my hand gestures that we are all very calm, casual, not awkward. You got this. Task number nine is to eliminate distractions from your daily routine. You can just go through one normal day and note down, whether that be on your phone or in your bullet journal, what you find is distracting you. Try to avoid being judgmental of yourself or beating yourself up over getting distracted. This is not about judging, just observing. For example, my most common distractions are notifications on my phone and the temptation to go on distracting websites during Zoom classes. After you've observed your daily patterns of behavior and made that list of distractions, it's time to take each distraction item and swap it into a way to get rid of it. For example, I tend to put my phone on do not disturb while I am working or studying. That way I just don't get any notifications except for calls from important contacts only. And for the distracting websites thing, I tend to use a browser extension that will block a certain list of sites that I tend to get distracted by during a set time period, usually just the time period of my class. If you take about a week now at the very beginning of the year to optimize that daily routine and get rid of some of those weak spots, you'll be a lot more productive throughout the rest of the year. And the final task I recommend is to remind yourself why. I'm sure like me, some of y'all have noticed that it seems a lot easier to be motivated and energetic at the very beginning of the year, but then we tend to lose steam as the year goes on. I encourage you to reflect on why everything you're doing is important. Why do you want to succeed in school or in anything else you do outside of school? Once you've thought up your answers to that question, you can put together an inspiration resource like a vision board of cut out pictures and quotes, or a journal page, or a Pinterest board, or honestly, whatever you like. There's no real rules here. Some ideas for things to include are motivational quotes, inspiring people that you look up to, or pictures that represent your ultimate goal. You can put this together at the very beginning of the year, or you can wait until a bit later when you're starting to feel yourself lose motivation. Once you've put it all together, it can be useful for later on when you start to feel tired or unmotivated. You can just take a quick glance at it, think about everything you put together, and hopefully that will re-inspire you to go out and do well. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have some other related tips that you would like to share, please do leave those in the comments below. I upload new videos every week, and I post photos of my notes and bullet journal on my Instagram, which is at studyquill. See you next time! Yeah.